Hey everyone, this is Nick, and while this might not be the year of the Linux desktop, it's definitely the week for the Linux desktop. Not only do we have the KDE Plasma 5.26 beta and GNOME 43 being released, but we also have a new Ubuntu Snap Store to replace the quite honestly crappy one that Ubuntu currently ships. And there's a lot more news about KDE Desktop and KDE Desktop apps. So let's take a look at the news and let's take a look at today's sponsor. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is my favorite solution to run a Linux or gaming server. It's what I use to run my own Nextcloud instance and my own only office server. The interface is super easy to use. They are affordable, they have tons of documentation online, and they have one-click deployable servers for a ton of applications or games, like Pi-hole. Pi-hole is a DNS sinkhole that filters out requests to ad-serving domains. Basically, it lets you block ads and improve network performance. It lets you actively monitor every DNS request made on your network and block requests as they come in. And you can deploy it in one click on Linode so you can ensure I stay poor. And to get you started, Linode is giving you $100 of free credit to get your own Linux server or gaming server running. To get access to that, just click the link in the description below. So the KDE team has released the first KDE 5.26 beta, and it looks like a pretty amazing release. First, Plasma Big Screen, which has been in development for a while now, is now more widely available. It's a KDE Plasma interface made for your TV, completely redesigned for, you guessed it, the big screen. It ships with the Aura browser, designed to be used with a remote control, a multimedia player for your local files, and it already has a few other apps like Deezer, Bandcamp, YouTube, Peertube, or Twitch. Of course, it doesn't support dedicated apps from Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney+, and all the other major streaming services you might have in your country, but you can access them from the web browser if you want. You can also use Mycroft to control it with your voice. But that's not all there is in Plasma 5.26 beta. We also have Discover, now displaying content ratings for apps, letting you change the name used for reviews, or getting a share button for applications, on top of letting you choose the frequency of update notifications. Plasma widget pop-ups are now resizable, like normal windows, and will remember their sizes. And they're all more accessible, especially with improved screen reader compatibility. The kickoff menu now lets you click on a letter header to view apps that begin with this letter. It has a compact mode you can turn on, and it works better with horizontal panels. The system settings also got better wallpaper previews on click, and you can use animated images as background, or dual dark and light wallpapers. The overview now lets you type to filter windows, and the night color page now lets you pick a manual location to turn on the anti-blue light filter. Wayland support also got the usual touch-ups, like adjusting how a graphics tablet maps to your screen and selecting if apps will be scaled by the compositor or by the app itself to avoid blurriness. It's a pretty big release in terms of sheer number of features, but there are no real headline grabber things, apart maybe from the KDE Plasma big screen thing, but it does not look like it's ready to replace your smart TV or any equivalent stick. Still, I'm pretty excited about this release. It looks like it has tons of polish, tons of new stuff, and of course, I will have a dedicated video in October when it's out. Now this week, of course, GNOME 43 was released. And if you haven't seen my dedicated video, here is a quick tour of the changes. First, the main shell menu now works with some quick settings instead of the old drop-down lists. You now get some nice pill-shaped buttons that are way more useful and don't make you open the system settings app every time you want to change something. Nautilus also got a better list view that lets you select multiple files and folders by dragging your mouse. It lets you use the context menu in the directory, but it did lose the expanded folders features, which sucks. Gnome Web has experimental extension support and the web apps it creates can now be managed by Gnome Software if the distro supports it. Gnome Software has better performance, now displays apps from the same developers at the end of app listings, and has a nicer drop-down menu for selecting the packaging format. The Calendar app also got an agenda and date picker, and touchpad gestures to zoom in or out of the week view. And finally, there's a new device security page in the settings, 
but that feature doesn't really seem complete yet, as it doesn't provide users any way to fix the errors it reports. It's a pretty nice stepping stone release for GNOME 44, all things considered, so do check the dedicated video on the channel if you haven't already. But that's not all GNOME devs have been working on. This week there are a few nice improvements, first to libadvita. It gets new entry rows that look better, and message dialogues are now responsive, with action buttons getting stacked when the window size doesn't allow to display them side by side. It's useful for windows with a very narrow size or for phones. The new About dialogues are also here, and a lot of apps already make use of them in GNOME 43. It looks a lot nicer, even though it's far from the thing you'll be looking at the most. The Advita tab bars also saw some improvements, they look nicer, and they now work with Ctrl plus Tab to switch between tabs, or you can use Alt and a number to move to a specific tab. Toast notifications can also now display titles and images, useful for messaging applications. Now, on top of all these libadvita improvements that you'll find in GNOME 43 and all apps that take advantage of it, we also got Apostrophe, which is a markdown editor which is now ported to GDK4. There's Flare, a signal client, which was just released. Pod, the Podman client, got a lot of new features, like connecting to different instances. Login Manager is now available via App Image, and it supports incomplete shell themes. And Cobbard, the Twitter client, is continuing its GDK4 port. Pretty nice changes to libadvita, and splitting this thing off from GDK was really a good move, as it seems to move a lot faster in terms of improvements, and developers really seem to like what's being added to libadvita, and really jump to add these features, so good to see. Now, another week, another update to KDE applications. First, Arc, the archive manager, is now adopting the newer KDE style, with a hamburger menu instead of a complete menu bar, which makes sense for a small app like this one. The keyboard layout indicator can now be displayed using a flag instead of the language initials, and you can now add an open terminal action to the desktop context menu. The Info Center now has a new page that gives details about KWIN, useful for bug reports, and there were a few smaller changes, like the animation speed for the overview, desktop grid, and present windows being brought back to 300 milliseconds, middle clicking on notifications will now close them, the network and Bluetooth plasmoids now display relevant actions in their right-click menu for more ease of use, and using the wallpaper's accent color should now look better and should reflect the most eye-catching colors of the background. They also fixed the Download New Wallpapers dialog. On top of that, Calendar, the newer Task Manager slash Contact Manager slash Calendar app, now displays full day events better in the month view, and events details can now be displayed in a pop-up if you prefer that over a sidebar. The Address Book also has a new context menu in the Contacts list. A lot of smaller quality of life improvements here, but that's honestly what KDE needs. It already has all the features and all the options. What it needs now is a little bit bug fixing and a little bit of polish, and that's exactly what the developers are doing. So, nice. Now, if, like me, you've always found the implementation of GNOME software in Ubuntu to suck big time, being slow, unresponsive, and generally lagging behind the true GNOME software app, then you'll be glad to learn that there's a new one being worked on that will be the official one when it's ready. It's written with Flutter and using PackageKit, and the new Snap Store feels a lot more responsive. It looks a hell of a lot better, and it has a better user interface than the previous one. Now, it's still a work in progress, and it needs some UX love, as the install button is currently located at the bottom of the apps page, Border radius and shadows and the general theme looks off compared to the Yaru theme Ubuntu uses, and it doesn't bring Flatpak support at all, which you could add currently to Ubuntu's current Snap Store. Still, it's an interesting app that might start the Ubuntu plus Flutter revolution that's been brewing for a while, with the new Flutter-based installer still not being available as the default. You can already try the new app for yourself by switching the current Snap Store to its preview or edge channel. And of course, you can revert to the previous one if you want to. Now, I'm genuinely interested to see what this flutter frenzy on Ubuntu might bring. Will it bring additional good applications specific to Ubuntu that nicely complement GNOME? 
Or would it just completely disjoint the desktop, make no sense, and everyone will just want to use the basic GNOME apps instead of the Ubuntu ones? I don't know, we'll have to see. Now, if you use Kden Life, or if you would like it to receive some pretty cool improvements, you might want to help them by contributing to their fundraiser. They're aiming for 15,000 euros and they already have close to half of that. The money will be used to pay developers to enable some nice features. The first one is nested timelines, which is a very useful feature that lets you split your project into multiple individual timelines and to group them into one big project with any modification to a timeline being reflected on the global project. They also want to make using basic effects easier with direct access to brightness, contrast, cropping, transform effects, audio volume and more. And they also plan to improve the app's performance with some code refactoring, especially for the video and audio playback part of Caden Live, which is definitely its main weak point right now. Caden Live is the video editor I built this channel on. I used it for like two or three years to kickstart the channel and it's been an amazing program. Nowadays I use DaVinci Resolve specifically because Caden Live is too slow at video and audio playback and previewing. But I did donate to their campaign and if you use Caden Live or if you don't use it because you think it's too slow, might be time to donate as well, if you care. Intel is investing in Krita, the amazing KDE digital painting app. They are the first company to become a corporate gold patron of Krita. And as a matter of fact, they are their first corporate sponsor, period. Now this doesn't necessarily mean much as the previous level of contribution is 250 euros per month or 3000 euros a year, which for Intel would be pocket change. But it's still nice to see as it brings Krita's total monthly contributions up to almost 8000 euros. What is Intel's goal here apart from some goodwill with the open source community? Well, they say that this will enable them to fully support Intel's 12th gen CPUs and its ARC GPUs, as well as supporting JPEG XL, better HDR, and more. Krita and Intel will also apparently collaborate on some white papers in the future to explain new technologies for art and painting. Now, congrats to Krita for scoring a big corporate sponsor. That's really nice. And generally, these donation-based sponsorships don't really mean that the project has to conform to anything the sponsor says. So yeah, you can expect Krita to stay independent and still work really well. And it makes Krita join that huge circle of super professional open source apps like Blender, for example, which is cool. And let's finish this video with some gaming news. First, it looks like there might still be hope for Halo Master Chief Collection on Linux. Well, the multiplayer part, because you can already play through the whole campaign on Linux, no problem. 343 is working on enabling anti-cheat support, but it seems like it's not as easy as clicking a checkbox somewhere. Now, it's still good to know that they're trying to solve the issue at least. Microsoft is actually kind of on point with their Steam Deck and Linux support, contrary to some other companies. <coughs> Budgie! <coughs> it also looks like Mesa, the open source driver for AMD and Intel cards on Linux, is going to get some nice updates. First, a patch will reduce the loading time of CSGO considerably. It's noted to go from 150 seconds to 10 seconds. On top of that, performance seems to be a focus in other parts of the driver, as another patch will bring up to 50% better performance for drawing, so actually displaying polygons on the screen. And what's more, the Intel Vulkan driver for Linux is also getting up to 60% boost in draw throughput, or at least it will once another patch is merged into Mesa. Now it looks like some engineers did some profiling and noticed that they could optimize stuff with just a few lines of code. It seems to benefit some benchmarks, but there's no reason to think it won't be of use in games either. Can't complain about driver and performance improvements, they're always nice to see. Always nice to see, like this segue to today's sponsor. Okay, so if you've tried to buy a laptop or a desktop that runs Linux correctly, you know how hard it can be to sift through forums, look if the hardware is compatible, try to find reviews, that's not the exact same SKU or model number. It's a pain. Tuxedo makes all that pain go away because what you buy from them is a laptop or a desktop that ships with Linux out of the box. 
and that's guaranteed to work with basically any Linux distro. You just grab your USB stick, plug it in, and the hardware supports Linux. No headaches, no compatibility problems, no troubleshooting. It just works. And you have support for that on top of that, which you wouldn't have if you buy a Windows device. So Tuxedo has a wide range of devices, from Ultrabooks to NUX to gaming workstations and laptops, and you can configure each device to your heart's content. They ship worldwide, they have a wide variety of keyboard layouts, Basically, there's something for you. So if you need a new device and you don't want to be bothered to look online to see what's compatible, head over to the link in the description below and buy yourself a tuxedo laptop or desktop. You will not regret it. Now, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really like the channel and you want to support what I do, well, there's a super thanks button at the bottom of this video. There's a PayPal link in the description, or you can become a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.